words, why are you the best person on the stage? That's a great question. Well, you know, I'll tell you this. I look at my record. I have, I have, on the city council, we always had strong opinions, but we always worked together to try and work things out. And I would look at, as Secretary of State, what I've done. I've been able to reach across party lines without compromising my principles. And I, I would point out my relationship with Attorney General Tom Miller. Now, I know some of you are going to boo and hiss, right? <laughs> but Tom Miller, when, when I went and tried to defend our Constitution, making sure that only citizens were voting, I get sued by the ACLU and by LULAC. Who stood next to me? It wasn't Republicans. It was Attorney General Tom Miller. And he went on Iowa Press and said, Matt Schultz is doing the right thing. We were able to work together on something that we agreed on. Now, in the same interview, he said he was against voter ID. But my point is, we need people who are going to reach out across party lines to try and balance our budget. Because I believe there are Democrats out there who agree we need to have a balanced budget amendment. And I'm going to find them. And I think there are Democrats who agree with term limits. Ask any Democrat if they were grateful that George W. Bush had term limits. They'd all raise their hands and say yes. Just like every Republican is grateful that Barack Obama has term limits. We can reach across party lines and get things done. And that's what I'll do. Thank you. Thank you. I think that's an excellent question, one that we all need to talk about. I've talked about trying to find a nominee up here that can check three boxes. And one of those boxes is, who can stand up to the scrutiny that's going to come with four to six million dollars of liberal attack as this fall? And a, and a press that sometimes, well, shall we say, we think maybe favors the other side and not us. So I'm here to tell you, I spent 20 years working with the media as I've been working to support conservative candidates and causes. I know how to deal with that. I've also developed a skill set for reaching across party lines, reaching across uh, even ideological lines. And you can look at my service when I represented this county on the State Central Committee, and Steve Scheffler was there and others. And we had a pretty interesting, diverse group of folks on the State Central Committee, but we got them to focus on what do we need to do to elect Republicans. And people who might not even talk to each other outside of that room were voting with each other to move the party in the right direction. Just today, I joined our Governor Terry Branstad in Coon Rapids, where he signed into law a Renewable Fuels Incentives Bill that was passed uh, not quite, but nearly unanimously by the Iowa House and Iowa Senate. We reached across party lines and did that. I don't think you have to violate your conservative principles to garner support across the party line, to, to independent support and even some Democrat support. We've got to do that. That's what Ronald Reagan did. That's what Chuck Grassley does. That's what I've tried to do in this campaign with having people like John King, the brother of Steve King, is one of my co-chairs, but having Dr. Greg Gansky, who represented this county for eight years in Congress, who's a little bit more of a mainstream Republican, also is one of my co-chairs. We're showing that we can have our conservative principles to draw a big tent, too. Thank you. Well, having been Senator Grassley's Chief of Staff, I've seen this up close, and uh, Senator Grassley was a good mentor on how to work with the other side of the aisle. And you'll remember that he was either chairman or ranking member of the Finance Committee when, when Senator Bacchus from Montana was either the senator or the ranking member of the chairman. And he always taught me that you have to be an honest broker and that um, you, know, you don't have to sell your soul out there to get things done. There are honest brokers on the other side of the aisle. So I know who to work with and who not to work with. And I was in a bipartisan chief of staffs group, uh, both through the House and the Senate, and so I know who to work with and not to work with and who those good brokers are there who believe as well that good policy in the end is gonna be the best politics. So I feel like I have a head start on this. Well, about a year ago, Governor Branstad uh, selected me to be on the Board of Regents. He nominated me for it. I had to go through the confirmation process through the uh, Democratic-led Senate. And things were going well as I was meeting one-on-one -on -one with these senators. But then all of a sudden we got into an education hearing, and all they wanted to talk about were my views on gay marriage and on uh, life. I said, well, I'm unashamedly pro-life, and I'm for one man, one woman marriage. And they just didn't feel like my positions had evolved enough. So, uh, but it, it took courage to stand up to the scrutiny and miss out on that appointment because of taking that stand. 
But what I learned through that process was that I don't believe that's what Iowans feel. I don't believe that Iowans want to have a litmus test for our personally held religious beliefs in, in order to serve in office. And, and so I couldn't believe that was the case. Well, what I see now was that I was kind of being prepared to take a stand and have that courage to stand on our values. But I also, the other thing I think we learned from it is that I feel like I did it in a way that was respectful to the other side and so that when we're in this debate this summer and we're going to get liberal Stacey Apple is going to go after whichever one of us wins this nomination and, and we're going to have to stand up to her and draw a line and say, no, we're not going to go there. But I think we can do it in a way that is winsome in order to win some independence over to our, our cause so we can uh, realize that liberal Stacey Apple is not who Iowa wants to represent them. It's uh, one of us here on the Republican table. And uh, so I, I believe I have the courage to do it. I also believe we need to have the resources to fight back uh, in, to her and uh, to represent Iowa. Thank you so much. Thank you, Brad. I think the question was, can you get along with Democrats? Can you attract Democrats? And what makes you a different candidate? And that is an excellent point. And it's a question that you all need to ask yourself. Can I get along with Democrats? In the Iowa Senate, uh, I can tell you that I did get a one piece of legislation through this last year that was signed by the governor. I wasn't sponsored by myself. I went over because of a relationship across the aisle. It wasn't very controversial. It was a dyslexia. Uh, legislation that we passed. Uh, in regards to attracting and making decisions across the aisle, I've done it. In the Iowa Senate, I'll tell you what, I do what's right. I don't make decisions based on party. I do not make decisions based on re-election. We have got to send someone out there that is battle-tested. I've had the lobbyists in the Iowa Capitol put pressure on me. I've gotten pressure from my uh, certainly from my party. I get pressure from time to time from the governor. I do what is right. And that's what's missing. People just want you to be honest to them. I think, I, we all talk to a lot of people. Democrats and Republicans are frustrated about what's going on. I agree with a comment that Matt said about term limits. I sponsored a term limit bill the first year I got elected the Iowa Senate. We've got to send someone that's going to be true to us and look us in the eye and do the right thing. Thank you. Good question. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I've led a life of diversity. I've led a life of diversity. I've reached across the aisle all my life through teaching in an urban setting, 400, over 400 students for 26 years. I've already spoken to several black churches. See, they know Joe Grandin at the man, not Joe Grandin at the candidate, and they like Joe Grandin at the man because he tells the truth. He tells the truth. And that's all people want is the truth. Someone that they can trust. That's what they want. See, there are a lot of Democrats that are conservative. Might not be on all the issues, but you can get them on pro-life, and you can get them on marriage between a man and a woman, and you move them this way, like I can do with the teachers. There's four Republican teachers in my school, over 50 people. Four. We just talked about the other day, they saw my article in the Des Moines Register. But they know Joe Grandin at the man, and so if you led a life of diversity, See, I can win this election in a landslide in November because they're going to vote for me in November because in 2004, I ran against a candidate named Joe Olson. In the heart of the Democratic territory, three out of the four precincts, I won where she lived. One was South of Grand, and I won it. Because they don't Joe Grand and at the man. And that's what I bring to the Republican Party, diversity. I don't see too many people of color in this place. We don't have anybody here. And so I got to wrap this up. Vote for Joe, June 3rd. <laughs>